My G80 went seven seconds with a manifold that looks like this. It might look like fine to most people, but I decided it was time to change things up and go with something way crazier. So I hit up John Volk. John Volk has been making E36 turbo parts for how many years? 2004, I think, was when I started making tubular BMW manifolds for, started all the single cam stuff and then did all the 24 valve stuff, the M50, S50 stuff, so been a minute. So I've seen his progression over the years. I was in turbo 36 stuff. With that, I saw he was making 3D printed parts of all sorts, like manifolds and you made intercoolers and what else you make that was like crazy or not common in my project car now the entire induction system is 3d printed the turbo manifold is 3d printed in canal the intake manifold is 3d printed aluminum the charge pipe is 3d printed aluminum basically anything and everything that you would have normally gotten fabricated or machined is 3d printed and it was just crazy to have almost zero design constraints to to design exactly what i wanted and not be bound by you know your typical bend radii on, on tubing and all that stuff so with that i i reached out to him i said hey would you make me new manifolds for my car we sort of figured out that these collectors on it were super restrictive we think mike and max psi and me both got stuck at 1350 wheel horsepower with those so we tried different turbos all sorts of stuff so he went and he designed me all new manifolds and then redesigned them because i gave him the wrong turbine housing scans anyone that actually knows me is like standard for my life how it goes and then with that can you also do a charge pipe can you also do a dump tubes everything in here he designed on the computer from 3d scans and then got 3d printed with the exception of these two up tubes i mean he still designed sort of a computer first and then knew how long it all had to be and then made them and they were not 3d printed because they're a standard bend but everything in here and we'll show you piece by piece and how it all goes together and how it all fits i have some computer movement things to show you guys what it looks like computer which is pretty crazy so i'm hoping this car goes from 1400 ish wheel to like 1850 wheel horsepower and go deeper in the sevens it went 780 we've done a bunch of changes in the car we'll go over and it should go way faster now his youtube is couch built and it's pretty cool so as someone that welded pipes welded manifolds did all this stuff this 3d scanning and designing is the future and cost wise if you were to do it yourself and you made a basic manifold and got it 3d printed even if you're a fabricator it's cost effective in my opinion yeah so like from a cost perspective, the entire twin turbo manifold setup was around 2,200 bucks uh, of actual purchase 3D printed stainless steel parts, which is crazy to me because if you take the Wayback Machine to like 2016, 2017, and look at what Full Race was selling tubular 2JZ or RB26 manifolds for, they were like 22, $2,300. So for the same cost, as an off-the-shelf manifold back in the day, you can get a completely custom one-off uh, stainless steel manifold for approximately the same price. And then you have, like again, like I said, almost zero design limitations. Any bend you want, any fitment you want, you don't have like an awkward bend and then come back and then a gap for no reason. You can make it like his, he made it as smooth as possible with as long of a merge as possible pretty much. That way the air wouldn't directly slam each other at a 45 degree angle like what was on there. And also like pie pipes, like pie cuts are dead. No more pie cuts, boys. This is a pipe I have had made by someone that like we got rid of that he even made one of those so we're gonna show you guys everything this is gonna make a bunch of power this is a crazy future of cars so the old manifold in the car if you look this is a collector this pipe and this pipe go together at a 45 degree angle as mentioned me and mike and max yes i both have the exact same collector although his turbos are under the hood and i like to flex so mine were out of the hood and we both made the same power it's not that this is a bad idea 1300 horsepower -ish and below it was okay although manifolds like this i bet will spool way slower so we're gonna see when we put these turbos on the spool gains that we have compared to this. You guys can't tell me when you buy a shorty header versus a long tube header. Everyone does long tube headers because they think it's gonna make more and more power and it often does. Even the front header on this car, which is shorter, still does not have a horrible merge. I talked to John about it, about making like this merge and this merge identical and then joining them back together. And we ultimately decided, we didn't know if we'd make a difference. So we went with this. Do I think the back pressure will be different between manifolds? Yeah, it, it probably will be a little bit different between the manifolds. I'm not that worried or scared about small changes like that and differences. The real thing is I hope we get past 1400 horsepower. I, I think this combo is gonna make 1800 wheel range and then also things we did that we didn't really have to do i had the engine bay 3d scan and when we 3d scan other little parts of the hood so he tried to make this fit in a similar spacing to the old one and almost reuse the old charge pipes and then i pretty much said like you're allowed to move it if it fits better like going to the t4 housing the turbos instead of v-band took up a little bit more space so he said we'd have to modify this pipe this is the old one this is the new one if they look like a similar layout they are but the placement and angles of the turbos are not the same so it's not just like we took the old manifold scanned them. Thank you. 
<laughs> so I know some people probably assume that, that we like took the old manifolds, scanned them, made these new ones that fit the same, it's a copy. No, the difference is those manifolds um, were made by cutting and welding pieces. You sort of end up wherever they are versus this is an extremely precise thing that this can be made before even ever touching the car and it's gonna fit almost perfectly. There will be like no shrinkage you said between these things. The only difference start to finish would be like gasket, us aligning these correctly because when we align them, if you're off a little bit, everything matters. But we run silicone couplers, so we're gonna have enough room forever. And also like this looks way nicer with one singular weld in the middle compared to this mess of things. Something else, which I know maybe people will think about is like, this is a front manifold and it's two pieces. The reason for that was cost. If this was one piece, this would be a 40, thousand dollar turbo manifold not even joking when i say forty thousand that'd be printed in china shipped here forty thousand dollars a little bit crazy so he cut them in half the the total manifold cost in the two thousand two hundred dollar range including delivery and then we had to buy v-bands and these are the wrong v-bands but the attention to detail that can be achieved even the pockets on the manifold is super nice the flow into the wastegate was as smooth as possible and i worried about boost creep and stuff and he thought that this would be good enough because it's sort of kind of on a bend he did touch this up on the belt center just to make sure there's no weird high spots and there wasn't so he didn't even like actually take f anything off the lowest spot being a fabricator and working on cars has learned things some people just weld pipes they don't think of everything he tried to take everything into consideration john even put these little i don't know if you see a notch there there's a notch right there so when they go on the car he placed these v-band clamps in a way that they're not touching anything on the car and in the gap on the v-band clamp you can see the notch to align them both together before tightening it things like that that most people wouldn't take into consideration but a lot of time and effort into this and i am very confident it's gonna work really really good he didn't 3d print the up pipe he designed them in the computer with the standard radius bends cut them and sand them till he got those exact lengths he wanted and then just added straight sections to it and saddle bung o2s on the back along with the correct flanges for my precision 64 66 turbos we thought about 3d printing them we spoke about it i don't know you guys might see the car 3d printed once it's not worth the money to have them 3d printed but for the cool factor of everything being 3d printed there's a high chance you guys are gonna see this car and I'll end up having 3D printed ones on with a logo or something looking cool on it just because a lot of this stuff gets hidden, you can't see it. Oh, also the wastegate dump tubes are 3D printed to the point in which you can then just add straight tubing. To have this 3D printed with straight tubing would have cost hundreds of dollars more. And we could have 3D printed a straight tube and welded it, but um, they sell tubes. So I wanted to do everything without having to weld a single piece and just having pieces that bolt together for a turbo kit, which is like insane. But this had to be welded and it's just cost. This manifold would have been 40,000. This, I have no idea. Um, he made an executive decision and just bought that in two pieces and then just welded it um, for me. And I'm assuming he made some sort of indicator on there, like a line or a notch. That way he could easily align them before welding. And we already test fitted this um, earlier when John was here behind me in the clip. And then I took it apart just sort of to show you guys the process and how it goes together. Um, it's part of the manifold where the two halves join together and the notches allow you to align them like this. Yes. That's for the wastegate, for wastegate priority to not have boost creep, we mentioned that before. So setup wise, just for reference, we're gonna install this and then show you guys the fitment through the hood. These manifolds are super easy to install. Luckily on this car, it's sort of just, look at the attention to detail. Even these little pockets are machined out and I've ordered turbo kits from other brands where this is not machined correctly. And all these small details in this uh, make it pretty nice. He, we did 3D scan a OEM turbo flange to get this. He did touch this down on a belt center also to make sure there's no imperfections and it seems good. And I'm not really, really, really installing this, guys. I'm just sort of kind of putting this in place. That way you guys have a reference of a visual to see how the turbo fits. If I was really installing it, we'd be installing gaskets and stuff on here too. The front manifold we already have with um, the wastegate part on it because it's pretty easy to get in. Cool. Also on the rear header flange, you can see the little notch one again I was talking about before. It's this thing right here. You probably see it. I think you've seen the video. And then that lines up with that notch. Looking through the hole to line that up is a super smart idea. John really took a lot of time and effort in designing this kit and it definitely shows. This is a little test fixture that, that John made me. It doesn't fit perfectly in this moment. It's like 90 something percent good, I would say. And a lot of the reason why is because the manifolds aren't bolted down evenly. I have one bolt on each, and this is just for reference to show you guys. And why I do all this, I'm gonna tell you guys why I do this and why I'm doing this. I'm doing this just to show what can be done with these cars. I'm not a huge drag racer. I really enjoy drifting and drift cars. This is just more of a proof of concept. I had the fastest F80 M3 on earth and no one's beaten the quarter mile record of 9-1 so far, many years later. So I still hold that record from 2021, I wanna say. And we're in 2025, so F80 guys, F80 two guys 
step your game up and you're really slacking. On this car, I just wanna do something similar and build it. This is a huge amount of time, effort, and money invested in a platform that I think is pretty good, pretty impressive. People are going like low eights, a few high sevens. One or two people so far beat me by a little bit. So it's a cool platform. And I just did this to really show what can be done with it. This is not being done because like I need to, or I think it's the best business model in the world. Obviously the more fast cars I do, the more people come to me to get tuned and stuff like that. So it does help, but really I can just sell intakes sling tunes and be fine. This is really for the people, as I mentioned before, because I think it's cool to build fast race cars. The original step of this car was show how fast you can go for as little money as possible, I would say, because it was like a piston rod and head gasket motor. And if I would have bought stronger pistons and rods, like the Italian rods and pistons that I have in here now, it probably would have held like 15, 16, 1700 wheel, at least. But I didn't do that. I got cheap off the shelf stuff because that's what was available when I purchased it. Italian rods and pistons was not slinging and stuff for these cars. And also like part of this whole car and how it works is I tune out MHG premiums only for the newer cars and doing crazy stuff like this just gets me out there more and people see what I do and people want to get tuned. If I can do this with a car, make you go sevens back to back, I can easily tune your six, seven, eight, nine hundred horsepower, thousand horsepower car. It's not really a problem. So that's also why I do this. And then by me doing that, I'm super familiar with MHG platform and I think it is the best thing you can use to make your car work right. I do work with them all the time and issues and quirks and things I have questions about. They work with me great. I've never seen another platform work as flawless as theirs does if you know what you're doing. And that took a little while to, to learn all that stuff. This also, does it come and swivel it in? And for mock-up reasons, I have no dump tubes in the waste gates, so the placement is gonna be a hair off, but extremely close. Even this charge part, as I show you guys, is 3D printed, and if there's gonna be people looking like, why is your engine all part? This is a mock-up engine. This this one has a hole in it still, and there's an extra good cylinder head. My head was still fine. Um, other than folding a rod, there was no like detonation or melted anything. So probably the other pistons are okay, and the rods potentially, but I don't really, I'll never use them. Um, so there's a mock-up engine because we're having a crazy engine built. I would say crazy, it's still basic, but a piston rod, ported head, different valve, engine built right now to try to um, step my game up to this 1850 horsepower range level. Ugh. Guys, these things are heavy. I really hope going to the T4 housings like this was um, worth it because boy, are they heavy. If you guys look at this fitment, which I can show you guys, the fitment from turbo to pipe is pretty perfect. In the 3D design, it's not pretty perfect. It is exactly perfect, but we have to play with clocking a little bit. Show the clearance from this. I'm not gonna put those couplers on right now because they don't matter. This is pretty funny. This dump tube was not remotely designed to go up. This dump tube was designed to go through this hole downward like this. The chances that this dump tube would fit like this and go perfectly through the turbos might be a calling. I need to do that. You guys let me know what you think. Dump tubes up or dump tubes down. Um, we have to extend this a little bit. That's not a big deal. All right. This is the overall look, and it might look the same once again as before. And out the top, we're gonna show you this slightly different. We'll show you exactly why. The end look will be like this. And obviously it's really close, but if you can see this notch before was lined up with the turbo. So this turbo is a little bit angled, slightly different. These pipes will be crooked like that a little bit. It's all got a little play because it is all a little loose, but stick with me. There's a vision here. This will go somewhere like that. This will go somewhere like this. We're gonna trim the hood again. This is it. This is the car. This is the setup. This is what you guys are gonna see. And now that this is good, um, this motor's gonna come out. We're gonna slam the new built motor in as soon as it is back and in my hands. And then um, work with MHD. Hit the up button, the boost. Make maybe 1800 horsepower, 1900 horsepower, something crazy. Uh, and go faster than everybody else because that's always the goal. It's been five, six months since this car broke and blew up. And I know I could have just went and bought a big turbo kit and put an 8085 or 80 88 millimeter turbo or 100 millimeter turbo, something crazy in a car and bought the strongest pistons rods on the shelf. But I think that everything I'm doing, even though I'm playing the long game of being down for so many months, I think it's gonna be worth it. And I think what I'm gonna be able to achieve is gonna be hard for others to replicate and duplicate. I wanna stand a little bit above and ahead of everyone. And this is my goal of doing that. Also, guys, G80 M3 with two precision turbos out of the hood. Can it get crazier looking than this? I don't think so, but you guys let me know what you think.